Welcome to a short video on amplifier loading effects. In this video we will look at the terminology when we're looking at different kind of gains. Um, single stage loading, matched input and output impedances and cascading when we're adding multi-stage amplifiers or using multiple amplifiers together. Okay, so we have three kinds of gains that will typically be described and that is the maximum gain which is the absolute maximum gain an amplifier can achieve and this is when the load is infinite and the source resistance is zero okay so on the output side there is technically nothing and on the input side there is only a source driving the amplifier with no impedance of its own. Okay, so this is the maximum gain that the amplifier can achieve. Right, the loaded gain is a typical one that you always see, and that is when there is a load attached to the amplifier and the source has no impedance of its own. So typically, you design an amplifier with a specific load in mind. Um, so this is why AV is the more typical one to see. Okay, then the total gain, GV, that is when there is a source loading and a load on the output of an amplifier. So when you're using an amplifier in a certain application, you will consider the input loading as well. Okay, so there is the three gains possible. Okay, so AV0 is the easiest one to determine from the amplifier, then with a specific load, and then with a specific kind of input. So how do these relate to one another? An amplifier has input impedance, and an amplifier has output impedance, and it has the maximum gain. These we determined from the small signal modeling of the amplifier and doing an analysis. This is also important in design with what you want to do with your output impedance and input impedance and how that relates to the source and the load resistor. Okay, so, but these three you can determine. Now, the total gain of amplifier is when we are viewing V out over Vs. So this includes the source and the load, right? So if this source is driving this resistance into a resistor at the input of this amplifier, we have voltage division happening with Z in being the place where the voltage go. Okay, so the input loading is Z in over Z in plus RS. So this is the loss on the input side. AV0 is the maximum gain. Then we have a loss going into the amplifier. And we will also have a loss coming out of the amplifier. Because our amplifier will have an output impedance of its own. And we want to see how much voltage is going to the load resistor. So the load resistor is main, so RL over Z out plus R load. This is the voltage division on the output side, and we also call this the output loading factor. So both of these will be smaller than one, and it will decrease our maximum possible gain. So another way to rewrite this is GV is AV times Z in over Z in plus RS, where AV is our loaded gain. Our loaded gain is V out over V in. So it's from this point towards V out. So that's without the source resistor being considered. And that is our maximum gain and just the 
voltage division on the output side. So this second term right here. So that's why we can have AV as the front end part of this total gain equation right here. Or another way to get to AV is just to set RS to zero and then these two Z ends will cancel out. Right. And then the maximum gain of our amplifier is when our load resistance is infinite and our source resistor is zero. So if our load moves towards infinite, they are going to become larger than Z out at some point, and this term is going to become one. So AV zero is just the output over the input with our load conditions, like we have them here. Okay, so those are the three ways to view amplifier. Maximum gain, loaded gain, and total gain. Right, typically in a design, you will sometimes see that the output impedance of amplifier and the load that it's driving is matched to one another. And that is for maximum power transfer from the amplifier to the load. And the same goes for the input. Maximum transfer from a source into the amplifier itself. Okay, so the condition for this on the input is that Zin should be equal to Rs. So this is sometimes a design requirement, not always. Um, in a voltage amplifier, if Zin is much greater than Rs, we don't have any losses on the input. But sometimes the requirement is to have this to be the same value. Then the total gain will be half max gain and the loading factor on the output. And if we have a requirement that the output impedance and the load should be matched, then we have half times AV0 and the input loading factor. This one is more typical to happen with Z in much greater than RS. And this is also when you're doing a rule of thumb kind of design. And then for matched input and output is to set both the same and then GV is just a quarter of the maximum gain. Okay, and that is what happens with um, matching inputs and outputs. And this equation actually comes very handy when designing with um, matched inputs and outputs so that your total gain that's required is a quarter of the maximum gain or four times the total gain is the maximum whichever way you want to view it right now this also becomes very handy in cascading or multi-stage amplifiers Typically, you won't find a single stage of these BJT amplifiers. Um, it's mostly two stages. So each amplifier has input and output impedance. Each amplifier has its own gain. Now, if we link them together like this, you'll see that these two amplifiers loads each other. This amplifier has an output impedance. And there's going to be voltage divisioning happening into the next stage. On the input and output, we still have inputs and output loading factors. So the way you, you can adapt this equation is that the total gain is the gain of a first amplifier multiplied by the gain of a second amplifier and taking the loss happening in between in consideration. This we will call loading factor 1, 2. Okay, and there's more stages, 2, 3, 3, 4, and so on and so forth. Okay, so the gain of these two amplifiers, so the 
total gain if we want to view this as one amplifier is the gain of a one multiplied by the gain of a second multiplied by the loading factor between the two. If we want to go to loaded gain, we add the output loading factor, which remains the same, just it uses the output impedance of the second amplifier. And if we want total gain, we just add the voltage divider on the input using the input impedance of the first amplifier. Okay, so using this method of voltage dividers and multiplying gains, you can just chain these together with the amount of amplifiers that you have, making your life extremely easy. You can just characterize the first amplifier, characterize the second amplifier, multiply them, and you have a total gain between the two, and then you can worry about the loading factors. This also helps with design. You can design amplifiers separately. And that's it for loading factors. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.